This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 1828. Are you taking the false first step? Part two, by Anthony Angaro of BreakTheTwitch.com, and I'm Justin Mollick. Happy Saturday, welcome to one of the only podcasts in the world where blogs are narrated to you for free, with permission from the authors. It's an award-winning podcast thanks to you, and today marks five years of this show existing. So crazy. I still remember recording the first couple of episodes, like where I was, what direction I was facing, what microphone I was using, everything. It's been a great journey, made better because of you, hearing from you via email or social media messages, finding binge listeners of this show who are in countries on the opposite side of the world from here. So great to see that and know that it's helping you in some way. So thank you for being here every day with me and some of you for five years, which is incredible. It means a lot, truly. But back to the regular show, today is a continuation from yesterday. I'm reading a longer post for you, a popular one from Anthony Angaro, and it's three times longer than usual. So this will be part two, and then I'll finish the rest tomorrow. So with that, let's get right to it and continue optimizing your life. Are you taking the false first step? Part two by Anthony Angaro of breakthetwitch.com. What you're actually buying. On January 2nd of 2014, Everything changed. I was browsing Amazon to look for some lightning deals after the New Year holiday and I came across a Kindle Fire advertisement. In that moment, the real reason I was purchasing all of this stuff was suddenly right in front of me. I hadn't been buying things. I had been trying to buy a better version of myself. Quote, people don't buy products, they buy better versions of themselves. Samuel Hulick. If you wanna be healthier and happier, this Kindle Fire seems like a great way to get there, right? It's offering you a fresh start with endless ways to get healthy and happy, endless. For just $99, we can click a single button, get a fresh start in life, and discover innumerable ways to get healthy and happy. It's clear that a fresh start, good health, and happiness are things that we all want. For the 2016 New Year, the number one resolution was to lose weight, followed closely by getting organized. And here was the Kindle Fire promising to help us reach those goals. Maybe it comes as no surprise that the healthy eating, nutrition, and weight loss industries amassed revenues of $574 billion in 2013 alone. And that number continues to rise. Whether it's a yoga video on a Kindle or a heart rate monitor on our wrists, we're spending a lot of money on things that are supposed to help us be healthier and happier. But is many of it working? Let's take a moment to consider it. Is it realistic to imply that an Amazon Kindle is the first step to getting healthy and happy? Sure, you can look up recipes and yoga videos on a Kindle, but you can watch Netflix and browse Facebook too. Buying a Kindle Fire to get healthy and happy is like saying that the only thing keeping you from your goals is that you don't have a portable electronic device with a seven inch screen. We take a false first step when we have an aspiration and then take an action that isn't actually doing something. The false first step is an outsourcing of effort, a delay of progress, and likely a loss of money. We all know how to be healthy, go outside, walk, stretch, or move in some way every day, eat fruits and vegetables, and avoid high sugar foods. We all know how to do this, and there's nothing on the Kindle Fire that'll make us more likely to do these things, but we buy it anyway. What was your false first step? Buying yoga pants instead of doing yoga? Writing 10 blog posts before you publish your first one? Buying a laptop instead of writing on whatever you have available? Getting stuck on a project and starting a new one instead? Researching new cameras when you don't use the one you have? Using the Kindle as an example, here's why we false first step. You wanna lose 10 pounds. You see an ad for Kindle Fire featuring yoga videos with the promise of getting healthy, happy, and a new start. Cue emotional discomfort, resulting in what I call the twitch, an impulsive, unproductive response to discomfort. You click to purchase the Kindle Fire, believing that it is the solution to your problem. Your brain releases dopamine, and you feel happy and proud as though you have taken a meaningful step towards losing 10 pounds. Money leaves your bank account, and a physical item is shipped your way. Kindle arrives in the mail, and you open the package. The excitement of an apparent step forward causes another dopamine hit, triggering more self-satisfaction and accomplishment. You feel better. Receiving the product? 
temporarily solves the discomfort you felt. It goes into a drawer and doesn't see the light of day, possibly ever again, and you focus on another goal or another solution to the same goal, and the cycle begins again. So what happened exactly? Buying that Kindle Fire convinced your brain that you actually managed to do something meaningful towards becoming that person you want to be, enough so that for a while, it satisfies your desire to progress and grow, and it makes you feel like you've actually accomplished something. Since you're convinced that you've made progress, you move on, and the action never actually happens, until that uncomfortable feeling comes up again, that is. Since taking a false first step eased that discomfort last time, the cycle repeats. Perhaps this time it would be yoga pants or a new pair of running shoes. Maybe it's a Fitbit that will finally get us outside, perhaps. I thought all these things too, over and over again, until after four years I spent over $12,000 and was in just about the same place with my running, photography, and calligraphy skills that I'd been before buying a thing. It took seeing that collective final damage for me to realize the true nature of my buying habits how to conquer the false first step. Number one, do the difficult thing. Deep down, you know what decision you're avoiding. It is often the thing you most want to avoid doing that is indeed the most important. There are a million ways to avoid it, to distract ourselves and take false first steps until the end of time. But the only way to move forward is to do the difficult thing, do the work, make the call, do the stretches, or hit the publish button. The difficult thing might give you anxiety. It might make you uncomfortable or nervous, but it is on the other side of that thing that the real magic happens. Number two, think like an entrepreneur. Instead of investing thousands of dollars in an untested, unproven idea, good entrepreneurs are taught to build a minimally viable solution and test it. They see if it works, find out if people are actually interested in it, and find the flaws early on. If you haven't spent a great deal of time shooting photos with a camera you already have, you don't need to buy a $1,500 camera to get better. You need to take more pictures. You might not even know what features you should be looking for that you don't already have, which makes any purchase at this stage premature. The minimally viable solution is doing what you can with what you have. Instead of buying new running shoes, go for a walk around the block. Instead of buying a new laptop, Write your short story on a piece of paper or on whatever you have available to you. J.K. Rowling wrote the first Harry Potter book on pieces of scrap paper. Let's be okay with writing a blog post on our slightly older PC. Number three, hear that in tomorrow's episode. You just listened to part two of the post titled, Are You Taking the False First Step? by Anthony Angaro of BreakTheTwitch.com. I'll keep this ending short for today, but I wanted to say thank you one more time for listening on this five-year anniversary of this show. really means a lot. By listening, you've changed my life for the better, and I'm hoping I can do the same for you by providing this free service. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll be back tomorrow to finish up this post where your optimal life awaits.